So folks, one thing that's happening this morning is that old Donnie is losing it. He is in a tailspin of anger and of sorrow and of fear because he knows his guy is losing. As the early results start to pour in and as people pour over the data, it's becoming very clear that his boy Herschel is losing big, big, big time. And why that matters to Trump is that he knows, and rightfully so, he is going to take the lion's share of the blame. That understandably, people are going to look to this maniac and the fact that he picked this guy and the fact that he's trashed electoral politics in that state for at least the last two years and blame him. And that's exactly what's happening right now. And if you look at the data, it's awful news for Herschel and it's even worse news for Trump. He's transparently unfit to be United States Senator. There is no reason for him to be that. In fact, the only reason, and I really mean this, the only reason Herschel Walker is currently the Republican Party nominee to be a senator from Georgia is because Donald Trump handpicked him and pushed for him because he competed on Trump's game show, The Celebrity Apprentice, more than a decade ago. You've lost before, Herschel. Yes. You were the project manager. You know how much I like you. Yes. I love you. I love you. Yes. I am not a gay man. And I love you, Herschel. Yes, thank Herschel, you. you're fired. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's a tough one. That was, that was a tough one. For a bunch of different reasons, that was a tough one. But that's it. That clip you saw, honestly, that, that is why Herschel Walker might become a United States senator. That's why he's the Republican nominee, because Donald Trump likes him. They go way back. He's a Republican celebrity with ties to Georgia. So Trump was like, he should be the Georgia guy and push for him to get the nomination against the loud objections of the entire class of Georgia Republican operatives. Republican territory, Walker won this thing by almost 40 points, but look at the de the gap here. Walker gets 67.6, go to the governor's race, Kemp got 74.2. That's the kind of number in Cherokee County that wins a race for a, uh, a Republican in Georgia, and that's the kind of number that's not enough. Yeah. So this is one of those places we're going to be looking. You get a lot of those voters I'm describing voted for Kemp, didn't vote for Walker. This is one of the places we'll be looking to see how they go tomorrow. Steve, can you bring it back to that 63% number? Um, and Jonathan Lemire, you can take the follow, but John Heilman, I'm just curious. This is what we were talking to the Rev about, uh, especially the African-American vote in Georgia and whether or not after all they've seen with Herschel Walker, leave Trump aside, just, you know, especially with Warnock's real aggressive ad campaign, letting Herschel Walker speak for himself, you know, the sense that it's a it's a very condescending choice uh, for Republican you know, nominee for Senate and that there may be some some voters that just can't find them, that just can't do it, that just can't do it. Yeah, well, I think that's I mean, there's it's really the case that the um, the contours of this race shifted a lot when Democrats secured the United States Senate and this, mm -hmm. the race in some sense became less had less stakes attached to it. And so how for both sides, but particularly for for Raphael Warnock's side, raising the stakes in the elections in order to drive to, to try to get the kind of turnout they needed to be able to win has been one of their main uh, goals. It would have been easy in some sense for them if the, if the fate of the Senate control of the Senate was on the line. Now it wasn't on the line. So they had to kind of shift strategy. I'm looking away. at them and they and listening they, to them and try to yes, try to focus. What the, what the? Uh, yes. And try to focus. I'm curious, Steve, whether you think uh, it, it, on the basis of what we know about the how the, the composition of the electorate, it, it obviously it was a presidential year, but the composition of the electorate in 2020 during the, the the presidential election, the normal election in November, then the composition of the electorate to the extent it changed in the runoff, and how that's mirroring what we're seeing in this. We, we obviously don't know yet for the runoff here, but what are, what are you seeing in terms of? But what the difference what difference there might be in terms of who's showing up to vote mm. in this election, how much that matters in terms of uh, how they, what the outcome is going to be? No, it's a, it's a big X factor. I mean, one of the big surprises in 2020 was how much the overall turnout in the general election in 2020, the the, the Georgia election that right. featured Biden, Trump on the ballot, how close the turnout in the runoff for the two Senate seats actually came to the presidential level turnout. One thing that Democrats successfully did in that runout, runoff campaign the last time around was they increased the African-American share of the mm -hmm. vote. And meanwhile, there was a, a slight but I think significant. This is the 2021 runoff that got Warnock elected in the first place. 
place. There was a slight but significant drop off in Republican turnout in some of the core Republican areas of the state. That includes northwest Georgia, the Marjorie Taylor Greene district in the state, areas where perhaps Trump and everything he was saying about Georgia and its election at that point might have depressed Republican yep. turnout. So that was one of those features, I think, in the 2021 runoff. Democrats, I think, are encouraged in what they see in these early voting numbers in terms of potentially increasing African-American turnout again for the runoff this time. The question is, on the Republican side, again, it's the only it's only answerable once we see all the Election Day votes. You know, it's it, it's that Republican voter who went out there and voted for Brian Kemp for governor and gave Kemp a, a, a convincing victory. Does that voter show up? So I think we needed to kind of show that data because what it demonstrates is that everyone is against Herschel Walker here, even some of the people voting for him. But what's critical is a lot of those swingy voters are leaning towards Warnock and or they're not going to vote. And a lot of those swingy voters in a state like Georgia, which is a redder state than than average. I know it's elected some Democrats recently, but it's still a red ish state. Those types of voters are Republicans, but they are not supporting Walker because he's a terrible candidate individually. But critically, he's been endorsed by Trump. He's acting like Trump. He's associated to Trump. And that's a big factor here. And Trump is losing it because, again, he knows he will take the blame. And what it's what's happening now is that if this happens, if they lose tonight and it looks like they will, the early results look absolutely abysmal. What that means is that any vestige of momentum or hope Trump had will be gone. He already took a shellac from conservative media after the midterm results back in November. If this happens, if they lose, and especially if they lose by three, four points, and it's not even particularly close, Trump will be crushed. Fox is already crushing him this morning before the results are fully in. For two years, politics in Georgia has been all about Donald Trump. And so it is today when Democrat Raphael Warnock goes up against Trump's hand-picked candidate, Herschel Walker. There's a lot at stake here. It's more than just the balance of power in the Senate. It's about the state of the Republican Party and Trump's role in it. He seems to be losing what used to be his iron grip on the GOP. He still has a hard core of supporters who will follow him regardless. But many of the 74 million people who voted for him in 2020 have been turned off. Right after that election, the 2020 deal, he ranted against Georgia's Republican governor, Brian Kemp, because he wouldn't fix the vote in Trump's favor. Kemp went on to trounce Donald Trump's guy in the gubernatorial primary. In the midterms, Trump-backed candidates lost vital races. Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, Don Baldock in New Hampshire, Tudor Dixon in Michigan, Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania, Carrie Lake in Arizona. And right before today's election, he was talking about terminating parts of the Constitution. That plays right into the Democrats' hands. He's trying to walk it back today, but the damage has been done. A win by Raphael Warnock would cement the Democrats' control of the Senate, making it much easier for them to confirm judges and other top officials. If Walker wins, Trump will take all the credit, guaranteed. If Walker loses, Trump will blame Walker for not inviting Trump into the state. Here's a warning from the Wall Street Journal, editorial board, no less. If the Republicans make Trump their candidate in 2024, he won't terminate any part of the Constitution. Quotes, what he's really terminating is the GOP. Second hour of Arnie, just getting started. Like, they're already talking about it. They're not saying the election is over, but what they're saying is the damage has already been done in Georgia to you know, Trump's reputation, and that fundamentally, he's probably too big of a buffoon to actually destroy the Constitution. But one thing he can do is destroy his own political party. But they're, they're sort of leaning into this idea. And even on CNN, they talked a bit about this, how right now he's a rambling drunk uncle, but fundamentally, they're going to turf him, especially if they lose tonight. He's the person who really needs to hear what the Constitution says. But in terms of your question, it is very clear that that Republicans still fear Donald Trump. And, you know, what's remarkable about it is that we just went through a midterm election where people gave a resounding verdict on this whole election denial nonsense, this dangerous election denial stuff, and defeated candidates who were carrying the Trump banner and carrying the election denial 
banner. And yet here we are again. And still the party leaders won't uh, won't denounce Trump, won't take him on friendly because they fear uh, the base. They fear primary voters. And in Kevin Mar- McCarthy's case, he's still trying to get the votes to become Speaker of the House. So they he you know, Donald Trump has that party. Uh, he's holding that party hostage right now. David Urban, I mean, it is like having, you know, the a drunk relative who yells out obscenities <laughs> or incredibly inappropriate things and you don't know what to do about him. And so ever people just ignore him. <laughs> I mean, it, it, soon he'll be like wandering around with an onion tied to his belt talking about, you know, <laughs> movies used to cost a nickel. Well, listen, there's no the, question the there. I just felt say, I didn't want to yeah, say the, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the current the current the current president did say turn on the Victrola at one point in time, not too distant ago. So um, we're not too far afield. But Anderson, to David's point, what he he raises, it's it's a good point, right? And to your point about the outrage machine, you know, we we just got drubbed as a Republican Party. We just got drubbed because independents told us that they, they feared Trump and Trumpy two Trumpy candidates. And, um, and, and, you know, as we look to 24, the Senate has, you know, a third of the Senate's up. So 33 sen- senators are running. Of those 33, 23 are Democrats, right? So, or, 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 or Cox with the Democrats. So the Democrats have a very unfavorable map in, in coming up here in 2024. And I am very fearful that if we don't try to, you know, turn the ship around in the water, that we're going to snatch a defeat from the jaws of victory once again. Like, that's what's happening right now. Right now, in this moment, Donald Trump is done and dusted. They don't really have a way around him, you know, rhetorically, so they have to get rid of him. But, you know, tonight, it's really his last chance. Everyone else, all the other big high profilers in any competitive race have lost. Yeah, there's like Marjorie Taylor Greene and things like that. They all they all won those kind of crazies. But in any competitive race, the Trump are basically lost or came extremely unexpectedly close to losing like Lauren Boebert and things like that. And this is his moment. This isn't really about Herschel Walker. It really isn't. It, maybe it should be. Maybe it shouldn't be about Trump because, you know, this is the man that may represent an entire state, a large state in the U.S. Senate for the next six years, but it's not really about him. Yeah, he's a crappy candidate, but fundamentally, it's about Donald Trump, and Trump understands that. In this moment, as the results come in, he is sobbing over them because he knows it's just a matter of hours before yet another knife is stuck into the back of his failed political career. And that knife is coming from his own side. It's coming from within the house. And guys, if, if you think they were ready to ditch Trump before, losing yet another quote unquote safe red seat that with any other context in any other time in a midterm election, if not for Trump and a Trump endorsed candidate, they would win by four or five or six. It is absolutely going to be done for him. 